For years, public campaigns have been waged against plastic-containing BPA, bisphenol A, a controversial plastic additive. But a new investigation by Mother Jones magazine has revealed that chemicals used to replace BPA may be just as, if not more, dangerous to your health than their cousin compound. BPA is still widely used in everything from the lining of soup cans to printed receipts, even though studies show it mimics the behavior of estrogen in the human body and have linked it to breast cancer, diabetes, obesity and heart disease. Just last week, a study estimated the use of BPA in food and beverage containers is responsible for some $3 billion a year in health care costs. But because BPA can hamper brain and organ development in young children, it's been banned in bottles and sippy cups since 2012. Now new studies show the plastic products being advertised as BPA-free and sold by companies such as Evanflow and Nalgene Tupperware are still releasing synthetic estrogen. The Mother Jones report goes on to look at how the plastics industry has used a big tobacco-style campaign to bury the disturbing evidence evidence about the products you use every day. Just lay out what you have found. Well, essentially, there is relatively new research showing that the vast majority of plastics, at least uh, commercially available plastics that are used for food packaging, contain BPA-like chemicals, so chemicals that are what they call estrogenic. And, and explain the what BPA is. So BPA is a, a chemical that mimics the hormone estrogen. And estrogen plays, we all have estrogen in our bodies, it plays an essential role in various bodily functions and is also very important in human development, so the development of our brain, the development of our organs. Uh, however, too much or too little of this hormone basically, especially during uh, early childhood or prenatally, can set you up for disease later on in life. So exposure, what the research shows is that exposure in the womb can then lead to breast cancer, diabetes, uh, increased aggression, a, a really sort of a staggering list of health problems later on in life. And so talk about what has happened since BPA has been banned. So, yes, and, and many people will recall that in 2008, the dangers of BPA became very widely known. Uh, there was, there was a, a scare. Major retailers pulled BPA from, it, from their shelves. Uh, customers began de demanding BPA-free products, especially for children. And many manufacturers began introducing products that were BPA-free. Uh, and all of us who have children have these BPA-free products in our home, most likely. Uh, one of the so, and in many cases, it turns out that the the chemicals that were that were used to replace BPA or the the, the plastics contained chemicals that were you know similar to BPA. Um, at any rate, many of these many of these chemicals had not been tested uh, to to see whether they had similar properties to BPA, whether they mimicked estrogen in essence, and uh, it turns out that that many of them do. So you, the the implication is that they could have similar effects on human health. You you begin your piece uh, by telling us the story of Michael Green and his daughter. Talk about yes. that experience. So Michael Michael Green is he had a two year old daughter. He's somebody who works in in the environmental health field, and he he had heard he had seen research suggesting that BPA free plastics may have may have posed some of the same problems to human health, and but he told me this this very moving story about about himself and his two-year-old daughter. Somebody else in the family had given his two-year-old daughter this pink plastic sippy cup with, with a picture of a princess on it, which she just loved. And every night at dinner time, they would have this battle of the wills over this pink plastic sippy cup. He wanted to give her the stainless steel sippy cup. She wanted the, the pink plastic sippy cup. And 
in the interest of maintaining peace in the household, occasionally he gave in and gave her this pink plastic sippy cup. But the decision really weighed on him. And I think that those of us who have children, I have a three-year-old son, can relate to the situation where, where sometimes you do the expedient thing in the interest of peace, but you, you, you wonder if it's the best thing for your child. And in this case, he decided that he would try to answer that question. Uh, and and he, he runs this environmental health organization, and he collected sippy cups from, from Walmart and Toys R Us, uh, Babies R Us, I'm sorry, and he sent them to an independent lab in Texas to be tested. And he found out that, in fact, uh, roughly a third of them did contain estrogen-like chemicals. And that, and, pink, and that pink sippy cup? His, his daughter's sippy cup was leaching estrogenic chemicals. And so his, his fears were founded. What can that do to her? This is, this is the big question. We know a lot about BPA. BPA is one of the most studied chemicals on the planet. And, and we know that these chemicals generally are associated with a range of negative health effects. But the specific effect of any given chemical uh, varies slightly from chemical to chemical. And we actually don't know what chemical is leaching out of that sippy cup. So it's impossible to know. I mean, there's, there's a very high correlation with breast cancer, for example, with, with all of these estrogenic chemicals and with certain developmental problems. But, this, but other specific diseases vary from chemical to chemical. So Michael Green, the way he describes it is uh, an unplanned science experiment that we're doing on our families all of the time. What is the campaign to bury the information, Mariah Blake? Well, there are there are multiple facets to the campaign, but the the primary the primary objective is to cast doubt on the scientific evidence linking these these pro, these chemicals to human health problems. So, and there are various ways this is done. In, in the case of of BPA, for example, the industry funded studies, uh, which were biased studies that found that this that the chemical was not harmful to, to health. And there's, there's a sort of network there. They publish them in certain journals that, that in many cases had links to the tobacco industry. They uh, relied on scientists that in many cases had, had helped to discredit the science linking uh, smoking and secondhand smoke to disease. So, so in many ways, this is, they didn't only borrow strategies and tactics from big tobacco. They are actually relying on the same cadre of experts that big tobacco relied on to bury, to bury the truth about smoking. I want to turn to a video made by the plastics industry featuring the vice president of Eastman's specialty plastics division, Lucien Baldea, speaking in the video made by the company. A pregnant woman is one of the people shown buying plastic products as Baldea speaks. We understand that there are concerns about plastic materials that are used in consumer products that consumers use every day. Those products include water bottles, baby bottles, and food storage containers. We can see how available information about plastic materials can be confusing and how it can be difficult for consumers to tell what is really safe. We want you, the consumer, to know the facts behind our clear, tough material named Triton. Consumers can feel confident that the material used in their products is free of estrogenic activity. Consumers should have high expectations of the products that they use, and no one is tougher on our products than the researchers and engineers at Eastman Chemical. Most importantly, we have used reputable, independent third-party laboratories that have used well-recognized scientific methods to prove that Triton is free of estrogenic activity. Numerous regulatory agencies around the world have independently reviewed our data and have approved the product for use in food contact applications. Some of the world's most recognized brands trust Triton as their ingredient. That was Lucien Baldea, who is president of Eastman Chemicals Specialty Plastics Division. Uh, can you respond to this, Mariah Blake? Well, e the Eastman product uh, called Triton, which is the product that, uh, that Baldea is speaking about in this video, is actually one of the primary focuses of, of my investigation. Uh, a number of independent scientists have tested this product and found that it is actually more estrogenic than uh, polycarbonate, which is the plastic that contains BPA. And Eastman Chemical, according to internal documents, which were released as part of a lawsuit, has taken pains to suppress the evidence, showing that its, its products 
or that this product in particular is, in fact, estrogenic. So how is it the EPA isn't regulating this? Well, and this this is one of the most surprising things to me when I when I read this when I when I was reporting this story. So there are about eighty thousand chemicals in circulation in the United States. Virtually none of those chemicals has been tested for safety, or a very very small fraction of those chemicals has been tested for safety. In general, chemicals are presumed safe until proven otherwise under the U.S. regulatory system. So. When a chemical like BPA is is removed from a production line, the industry will substitute another chemical that is untested. And we really, in many cases, just don't know the health effects of that chemical. So uh, it's, it's largely an unregulated realm. Tell us about George Bittner. OK. George Bittner is a neuroscientist at the University of Texas, and he has launched an independent lab called Certicam. It also has a sister company called Plastipure, and it tests products for estrogenic activity. And he, uh, working with a prominent Georgetown professor, he and his staff tested, I think it was 455 commercially available plastics that are on the market, and published a paper in Environmental Health Perspectives, which is the premier NIH journal, which found that virtually all commercially available plastics uh, have estrogenic activity. And among the plastics he tested were, were, were Triton products, several Triton products. Uh, and this, this publication, this, this finding, prompted a pretty big backlash from the industry. So he ended up being being targeted by the industry as a result, and in fact was was sued by Eastman, which is uh, many of the documents that that form the basis of my story were released as a result of that lawsuit. Mm -hmm.